Okay guys, so what I've decided to do for my assembly outfit table is go with a torsion box style top and a replaceable assembly top. So what that means is what I'm going to do is build a torsion box that's going to sit and get mounted to the steel base. What I'm going to do for the top is have a removable and replaceable top. I'm going to use a piece of three quarter inch Baltic birch ply and what that's going to do is not only give me the flattest top that I can get because of the torsion box because Baltic birch is, uh, it, it has a lot of plies and it is very flat and straight and I like to work with it a lot because of that reason. What that's going to allow me to do is actually mount it to the torsion box and then once that gets damaged over time, which it should take a very long time before it gets damaged, I can just unscrew four or five screws, flip it over and use the other side. And this way I can have uh, an assembly table that's going to last me for years and years before I have to go out and actually get another piece of plywood for it. Alright, so let's put that on there right now. Okay, now the reason I just dropped it on the steel base like this is what I'm going to do is since I need to cut the pieces for the torsion box, I still need an outfeed table. So I just threw the top on here just for the time being and that's going to serve as my outfeed table just for a few minutes while I cut up all the individual strips and the piece of the torsion box that I need. Then we can remove it, add the torsion box and once that's assembled we can screw this down and then we can put a finish on it, cut a shelf for the bottom and start to load this sucker up with some tools make it even heavier. Now I've already broken these sheets of plywood down into more manageable sizes with my track saw in the other portion of the shop. So now what I'm doing is cutting strips for the torsion box assembly which is going to be the two side corners, the lengths and also the inner beams and that's going to be two and a half inches in thickness. Now I need to cut my torsion box frame to the exact length and width that I need. So I'm going to cut these pieces at the same time so I get dead accuracy and everything's going to be completely square. Now that I have all the parts for the torsion box cut, I can start to assemble this thing. Now to keep it square and also to maintain flatness throughout this whole torsion box assembly so that the assembly tabletop actually stays flat as well, I'm going to use inner cross beams. Now the rest of the torsion box is made up of a top skin and a bottom skin and what I'm going to do is use quarter inch plywood to skin both of those sides. Now I'll apply some glue to the torsion box base and then we can drop that plywood skin on top of it. Now for this here, this is the skin of the torsion box. I'm going to use narrow crown stapler instead of brad nails. It's going to give it a little more holding power. I've slightly oversized the top, so now I'm going to use my trim router with a flush trim bit and just level everything up and keep it dead square. Now I'll go ahead and flip it over and repeat the process on the opposite side.
Now that the torsion box assembly is complete, I can move this temporary top out of the way and line everything up with the base. Now I can go from underneath using the pre-drilled holes and I can attach the torsion box permanently to the base. And now it's time to drop back on the replaceable top. Now you'll notice I'm leaving a three and a half inch overhang and that's going to be for clamping. I'm only going to use four screws, one in each corner to hold the tabletop down because this is going to be replaceable. So in the event that I damage it, I'm just going to pull those four screws out, flip it over and screw it back down to the other side. Now I need to extend my miter slots into the table. This way when I use my crosscut sled and my miter gauge, I don't get hung up on the work surface. For the finish, I'm just gonna use a couple of coats of amber shellac. Not only does it look nice, but it'll give me a little protective film that I need. Now after the shellac dries, I'll give it a quick coat of paste wax. That'll help with uh, eliminating glue sticking to it when I'm doing uh, glue ups on panels. There was another great feature right here with the steel base. I was able to affix the torsion box top to the assembly base here. This steel base right here also houses a nice shelf, gives me a lot of underneath storage, and I still have plenty of room for my dust collection hose to get right back there into my table saw, and it doesn't interfere with anything. So I'm keeping my compressor down here, and basically all my um, power tools and some hand tools. Okay guys, this project is done. I want to thank you for joining me. I did decide to go with the torsion box after all and a replaceable top and it worked out great. You see the torsion box made the top completely flat. Then I finished it with a couple of coats of uh, amber shellac, sanded it down, another couple of coats of amber shellac until I got the finish that I wanted so I have nice protection on there. You see that I extended the miter slots and the reason I had to do that was so that when I'm using crosscut sled, go all the way through, it doesn't interfere and I won't get hung up on the table. Now the tabletop is just about a 32nd or a 64th of an inch below the top of the table saw. And the reason for that is so that when I'm running pieces across there and using it as an outfeed table, when I'm not using it as an assembly table, it doesn't get hung up on the lip here. So I'm just going to pull up my cross cut slip and I'll show you how that works. All right, here I just have a scrap board here. I'm going to run along the fence. As I run along the fence, right there onto the outfeed table, now when I'm done, a couple of projects and now I have not only a nice assembly table but also a nice outfit table as well so now I can start to assemble my parts screw things together butt joints work on cabinets bookcases anything that I need to lay everything down have my pocket hole jig put it on there have a nice good flat surface to build the furniture on all right guys so Thank you for joining me in this video. Make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already done so. Make sure you also click the little picture of that bell on the side of the subscribe button. That's going to notify you every time I upload a video. 
like I said in the past in my other videos, it's usually on a weekly basis, if not a bi-weekly basis, depending on how big the project is. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I'm going to put a link right here at the bottom of this video on the screen. So click on that. Follow me on Instagram. You'll get projects, uh, pictures of videos that are in the works. All right, guys. I'll see you next time.